In this week's Tablet Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to take any reference line and turn it into a table calculation that you can then use later. Let's start by building a simple view of sales by quarter. So we've got 16 marks across the view, each one representing a quarter of sales. If we go over to the analytics pane here on the upper right, we can go ahead and drag on a reference line. So I'm going to drag on an ref uh, uh, average reference line across the table. If we click on this refer reference line and choose edit, we can see how the reference line is built. So how do we then turn that into a table calculation? So what we need to do is I've gone ahead and brought up a screenshot of that. And all we really want to do is put the word window. So let me make this a bit bigger. We want to put the word window before this. So window underscore. And what that does then is that allows you to then take that calculation. So this would be a, a reference line is merely a window calculation. So we'll do a window average of the sum of sales. So let's see what that looks like then. So let's go ahead and close our reference line. And let's build a new calculation. And let's call it uh, average sales uh, reference line. <clears throat> or actually, let me call it average sales table calc. That might be easier. And what I want to do is I want to do a window average of the sum of sales. So if I look back at my, uh, my screenshot, you can see we have a window average of the sum of sales. Okay, that's exactly what a reference line is doing. So let's hit OK. And now keep in mind here that we've got 143,575. So let me go ahead and take that reference line off. I'm going to drag my average sales table calc to the detail shelf. And when it actually, let me go ahead and put it on the rows instead. And if I go ahead and set this to use the table across, and if I look at that table calculation, it's saying for each, uh, let's see, it says calculate the average sales, average sum of sales by year and by quarter. And notice when I hover over this, I now get 143,575. So let me go ahead and label that line. So we can see we get the same value in every one of those. So that's just showing you, again, if I put the average reference line back on, on my analytics pane, I'm going to do it for my table for my sales. Let me go ahead and edit my reference line so I can also include the value. So I'm going to do, I want to insert the computation, and then I'm going to insert the value just to show you what it's actually doing. So we have 143,575. And then on this one, if we go ahead and put the line ends on, we can see we've got 143,575. So that's exactly what that reference line is doing. Okay, so let me duplicate this sheet. And instead of having this as a separate Instead of having the average sales table calc as a separate row, I'm going to go ahead and take the average reference line off and then go to my all marks card and move my table calc to the detail shelf. And now we don't see it again, but we can then use that as a reference line. So I'm going to drag on a reference line across the table and I'm going to base it off of my average sales table calc now. And I can hit OK. And now again, we could see 143,575. Okay, so that's fantastic. So now let's go ahead and duplicate this sheet again. I'm gonna, and this time, I wanna take an average reference line and put it for each pane. And you see now we get different values for each one. So let me go ahead and edit this table calc and put the value on. And we get 121, 117, et cetera. So I can now adjust this table calc to work across the pane. Or, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, that's my reference line. That's okay, so let me do that again. So if I edit this reference line and I do it, uh, let me see, let me go ahead and take that off the view and do the same thing like I did before. Let's put that as a separate field and let's tell it to compute using pane across. And now you see we get the same values, 121, 117, et cetera. So again, if I go here and turn on my line ends, you'll see I get those same values. Very nice, okay? 
So let's let's look at another example then. Let's say we want to look at uh, we want to look at each region and we want to look at the ship mode within each region and maybe the profit. So we've got a simple bar chart here. I'm going to do my nested sort because I like to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and put ship mode on color so we can see it a bit better. Um, okay, so uh, what we want to do now is we want to look at maybe the uh, total profit for, no, let's say we want to do the, uh, the median um, uh, or we want to create a reference band that goes from the lowest to the highest. Let's do that. So let's drag on a reference band and we want to do it for each pane. And we want to set it up to be the minimum and the maximum. So if I go ahead and hit OK now, you can see this, ref this uh, reference band here goes from the minimum to the maximum. Let's go ahead and edit that reference line. And let's go ahead and turn on the values so we can see them a bit better. OK. And so, for example, we now in, in the south, we can see we have a we have our reference band goes from 26,952 and the lowest value is 17 is a negative 1762. So let's go ahead again and look at how that table calculation is built. <clears throat> and again, if we put the word window before minimum, it would be a window minimum of the sum of profit. That'd be one calculation. And the second one would be a window maximum of the sum of profit. So let's go ahead and create those calculations. So uh, let's call this uh, min profit table calc. And uh, this time we're going to make it a window min of the sum of profit. So let's go ahead and drag sum of profit into the view. And that's our minimum. And then I'm going to just duplicate that and change it to a maximum. So let's call that max profit table calc. And this time I'm just going to change it to a window max and hit OK. And now let me go ahead and uh, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and put sum of profit on the view again. And on this one, let's go ahead and remove the reference line. Oh, OK, removed it in both places. That's fine. So let me go back and delete and duplicate the sheet so we can uh, see both versions. So let's duplicate that sheet. Let's go ahead and remove that reference line or that reference band. I want to put my, uh, let's uh, go ahead and first look at our max table calc. And we want to compute it for each pane. And let's go ahead and change this mark type to a line, or actually let me change it to a Gantt bar and remove the color. And then I'm going to go ahead and make it bigger, make it the big size. And now it actually looks like a line, which is pretty cool. And then I'm going to drop my min profit table calc on top of the max so that I get a shared axis view. OK, now this one is set up. You see it's going across the whole table. So I need to configure this table calc to be paned down. All right. So now if I take uh, my measure values and I make it a dual axis chart and synchronize, I need to remember to go back to my sum of profit and change it to a bar. You can see we have those same ranges. So we go from the min to the max. Actually, let me go to my uh, Gantt bar and turn off, take measure names off there and make them black. OK, so now see we go from the min to the max, which looks pretty cool. OK, so now that we have those fields on there, we can then uh, use those. Anytime you have a field in the view, you can use them for a reference band. So let me just show you what that does. We can go from the min to the max. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off these lines. And I want to go from, oh, sorry, wrong field. <clears throat> Let's undo that. OK, let me go back here. Keep going back. OK, so now if we want to actually draw uh, maybe the difference between these two, let's go ahead and create a calculated field and let's call it uh, band size. And we're going to go from the uh, max minus the min. And that's just going to give us the difference between these lines. Hit OK. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, my min or my max profit off of the view. And now that this is a Gantt bar, I could take my field, which is my band size, put that on size. And this again needs to be configured for each pane. 
and let's make it uh, let's make it a light gray instead and then move those marks to the back and now we've created a reference band that's doing the same thing so that's how you could take kind of any any um, uh, table or any reference line and turn it into a table calculation so if I go back to my screenshot we just put the word window before that field so it'd be a window average of the sum of sales. Okay, so let's look at one more example. <clears throat> let's say we want to look at uh, maybe the total function. So uh, let's take ship mode and let's split it up by region. This time we're just going backwards and sales. Okay, so now if I go ahead and I turn on my subtotals, so I can drag on my subtotals You'll see I've got the total for um, the ship mode. Uh, the total for first class is 351,428. So let me go ahead and just turn on the mark labels. And if I want to turn that into a table calculation, so let's first start by dragging on a reference line for each pane. And I want to make this the total function. So it's the total sum of sales. And let's put the value on there and hit okay. And then I'm gonna edit this, uh, I'm gonna format this reference line so that the label is at the top so we can see the difference. Okay, so now we've got the same two values, right? We've got the total and notice how it matches the end of our total uh, bar. Okay, so how do we turn that one into a table calculation? So let's edit that. And this time we wouldn't put the word window before total because there's no such thing as a window total. Now we could probably do it as a window sum, so let's try that as well. But there's also a total function, okay? So let's go ahead and create a new calculated field, and I'm gonna call this uh, total sales um, uh, table calc. And there's a total function, and then I just wanna do the total sum of sales. So this is exactly how my, uh, my reference line is calculated. Okay, so let's drag that into the columns and just see what it looks like and set it to pane down. And there we go. So we've got the same value for each of these. And if you wanna make it look like a reference line, just change it to a Gantt bar and make the size as big as it'll go. Now, a reference line is obviously the easiest way to do it, but um, it's, a, it's a neat way to go ahead and uh, just learn how you can take a uh, a reference line and turn it into a table calculation. If I go back to the previous example, if you don't want to put a reference band on here, this might be one way that you could then mimic what that does. Okay, so that's the total function. And let's, uh, let's create one more. Let's add on one more reference line and let's do it for each pane on the sales. And this time let's do a sum and hit okay. And actually this time I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let me, I'm gonna remove the reference line for the total. Okay, so now what is this doing now? So this line now represents 702,000. That's because what Tableau is doing is if, if I lasso all of these points and then I look at my status bar at the bottom, you'll see it says 702,857. So that's actually including the, uh, the, the subtotals. So let's go ahead and remove the subtotals. Oops. So I need to go up to analysis, totals, and remove all subtotals. Okay, and notice, you know, in our total function, we still have the same value, which is cool. Okay, so now this one again says 351,428. So we could take that and make it a reference line. So in this case, actually, let me go ahead and do another screenshot for you. So let's edit this calculation. And uh, let's go ahead and do a screenshot. Okay, and let's uh, close that. And then let me go ahead and bring that picture up for you. Okay, so again, what we'd wanna do is we want to go ahead and uh, take the word window and put it before that calculation. So let me make this a bit bigger. Window with an underscore. Okay, so now in this case, we're gonna do a window sum of sum of sales. All right. So let me go back to Tableau 
hit OK. So it's, we're doing window sum, sum of sales. And let's go ahead and create a new calculated field. And let's again, uh, let's call it total sales table calc. Um, I'm just going to put window on there because I can't think of a, or let's call it window table calc. Okay, and this time we're going to do a window sum. Uh, let's scroll down here, window sum of the sum of sales. Hit OK. And then again, we can drag that up to our columns and just show that it works. And if we make that pane down, you'll see I get that same value I was looking at before. Now on this reference line, if I edit this reference line, and let's say I make it across the entire table, the value we get is 2.2 million or 2.3 million. If I change this table calculation to be tabled down, you'll see I get that same value. If I change this reference line, for some reason I want it to be for each cell, which is basically the end of each bar, you'll see I get a nice little uh, value. So the first one, my um, reference line, it's a bit hard to click on the reference lines in this case. Uh, let's see if I can somehow, let's make an entire view. Okay, yeah, that might make it a bit easier. So this one's 58,747 or 547. And let's change this one to be at each cell. And now I get those same values. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, the whole idea there is to go ahead and just put the word window before the value there. Let me go over here. This one's a bit easier to see. So in this case, we're doing a window average of the sum of sales. So you could take any reference line and turn it into a table calculation. So what does that tell you? It tells you that reference lines are just table calculations, but Tableau makes it easier for you just by dragging them on and off the view. So hopefully you found that helpful and uh, we'll be back soon with another tip. Have a good day.